In a previous video, we produced toxic benzene. Now it's time to build off that toxic starting point and make another toxic chemical, but a better smelling one. Nitrobenzene is best known as the chemical that gets hydrogenated to aniline. It can be made into other chemicals and serve different purposes such as fragrance and as a solvent, but these are outshined by the use in producing aniline. Some 95% of nitrobenzene is used in aniline production. In a previous video, we produced benzene from benzoic acid, which was made from toluene. Today we are taking that benzene and producing nitrobenzene. The chemicals needed for this reaction are concentrated sulfuric acid, concentrated nitric acid, benzene, sodium hydroxide, and a drying agent such as molecular sieves or anhydrous calcium chloride. To begin, 80 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid is added to a 500 milliliter round bottom flask in a water bath, and a stir bar is put into the flask. Stirring is started and 70 milliliters of nitric acid is slowly added. A thermal reaction occurs here and needs to be added slowly. The acids mix here is sometimes referred to as mixed acids. The mix is important as it forms nitronium ions used for the reaction. The reaction produces another ion, the deprotonated form of sulfuric acid. You will see in later steps that this ion is regenerated to sulfuric acid. Now with the nitronium ions, we can begin the reaction. Next the flask is heated to 40 degrees celsius, then 50 grams of benzene is added. Once again, this is slowly added. The 50 grams of benzene is added dropwise over the course of a half hour to an hour via an addition funnel. It is very important to add it slowly due to the danger of a thermal runaway. I noticed vapor escaping from the flask, so a reflux condenser was connected, which will also be used in a later step. But by adding it earlier, we can make it sure that all the chemicals stay in the reaction vessel. The flask should be kept warm at this point, above 40 degrees celsius, but below 50 degrees celsius. If the temperature goes above 50 degrees celsius, the flask is cooled. This step is done under heat to allow nitration to take place while the addition occurs. This is so that in the reflux step, a rapid nitration does not occur, causing a thermal runaway. If you cannot tell, thermal runaways are a common problem with this reaction. A runaway will also decrease yield. After all the benzene is added, a reflux is started by raising the water bath temperature to 60 degrees celsius. The reflux is carried out for about an hour. Care must be taken not to heat above 60 degrees celsius, as this will form dinitrobenzene. I stepped away for a few minutes and it rose to 65 degrees celsius for a little bit. Till I noticed it, this means dinitrobenzene has formed, which we'll see later. The nitration of benzene is known as electrophilic substitution reaction. That's a lot of big words, so let's break down how it works. The nitronium ion is generated by producing the mixed acid. It then attacks a double bond on benzene, creating a new bond between a carbon and a nitronium ion. The movement of electrons also produce a carbocation. The formed intermediate loses the hydrogen on the same carbon that the nitronium has bonded. The hydrogen is taken away by water forming a hydronium ion. The electrons that were bonded to the hydrogen then swing in causing a bond to shift getting rid of carbocation in the process that was previously created. The final product of nitrobenzene is produced along with the hydronium ion. The hydronium ion then regenerates the sulfuric acid which was used to produce the nitronium ion originally. This also reverts the hydronium back to water. At the end of an hour of reflux, the flask is allowed to cool to room temperature. Once cool, the contents are then transferred to a separatory funnel. The bottom layer contains acid and the top are nitrobenzene. The nitrobenzene is then washed with 100 milliliters of water. The lower layer is now the nitro. This is taken out and washed with sodium hydroxide solution. This is to remove any leftover acid. The reaction produces gas, so care must be taken not to add the solution too quickly.
The nitro is then once again removed and a final water wash is used to remove any leftover sodium hydroxide. It's very important that all acid is removed. If not, then in the distillation, any acid that's left over will react to form dinitrobenzene with the nitrobenzene that's already formed. These washes will contain small amounts of benzene and nitrobenzene, so it must be treated as a benzene waste product. Next, the cloudy nitrobenzene is distilled to remove any unreacted benzene and to remove any produced dinitrobenzene. Benzene boils at 80.1 degrees Celsius, so anything that comes over before the boiling point of 210.9 degrees Celsius, the temperature in which nitrobenzene is boiled, is discarded. The flask is then switched out when the proper distillation temperature is reached. My hot plate gave out here, so I had to switch it out to continue the distillation. Soon the temperature dropped and no nitrobenzene came over. Do not heat too high past the boiling point of nitrobenzene. If any dinitrobenzene has been produced, it may rapidly decompose, causing a rapid, unplanned disassembly of your glassware. The nitrobenzene is a bit cloudy due to water. I tried starting with anhydrous calcium chloride, but it appears to be not so anhydrous, so I just used molecular sieves, which cleared it right up. The dry nitrobenzene is then transferred to a bottle. The yield was 47.20 grams, a 60% yield. The lower than stellar yield is due to the temperature reaching too high during the nitration step. If I was to do this reaction over again, I would make sure to keep the numbers in check. I know that this is the problem due to the substantial amount of residue left over in the flask after distillation. Another common problem is lack of nitration, which will be shown by a lot of benzene coming over during distillation. To address this, a longer reflux may be needed, or your temps were too low during the reflux step. For me, I had very little benzene come over, so I know this is not the problem. The dinitrobenzene is easily cleaned out using a bit of alcohol. For the rest of the waste, it was neutralized to a basic pH and stored in a dedicated benzene waste. For analysis of the product, I was going to do an FTIR and an H1 NMR but there was time for a GC mass spec, and I think you'd prefer that. The samples were prepared using around a microliter of product, and the solvent was dichloromethane. I did a quick 20 minute run and got good data. The GC mass spec outputs very easy to read data, showing quite a pure product. I noticed some dinitrobenzene was able to make it over in distillation. There was also 5 hydroxyl methyl furyl which was most likely came from the benzene as an impurity, or the column could just be dirty. With that all being said, check out the links in the description for my Discord and for my Patreon. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, post those in the comments section below, and I hope to see you once again.